Welcome to the Comic Blast Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the Comic Blast Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Grayson. Along with me is an assorted cast. We're doing our Zack Snyder's or Zack Cinder's yep. Justice League, as Zack <laughs> wants to call it. But I'm Grayson, one of your main hosts. Along with me is Keenan, as per usual. And we have Raymond back for the Snyder Cut review. And we have Caboose, after a long time hiatus of not being on the podcast as a guest host. That's uh, me. That, that yeah, is also me. Hiatus? Also you yes, say hiatus no. like I've been asked before today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I asked you like three he, days ago. <laughs> you yeah, asked me three days ago for me, this podcast. Two podcasts ago. So he's not wrong. Listen, you, okay, Caboose, you're a busy man. You are a streamer. You are a YouTuber. Yeah, you've got you're, a packed you, life. Oh, I was about to say, like, I don't like to impede on your life. Uh-huh. So, uh, so no, I man, only look, ask you what I think I absolutely would love to be on. Yeah, true, 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 true. I got you. I got you. I am kind of a big yeah. deal. Yeah. I mean, you get packages from Marvel, <laughs> but you didn't get an early copy for the Cinder Cut. I'm like, you I know. know. How the hell? Like, literally everyone I know got to watch the Cinder Cut like early, except for me. <laughs> except for me. Yeah, what an experience! Do what it be. It do just, what it be. What it do. <laughs> we we got. Or Keenan was able to get a Warner screening uh, through some contacts, nice. and so actually he was able to see it early. I wasn't, but it doesn't matter. It's like two or three days after it's come out. Yeah. So. Obviously, we're talking about the Snyder Cut. Um, I'm going to save all the housekeeping stuff towards the end, but I wanted to say that Caboose won't be here for the full episode, so at some point he will dip out, but we're going to cram it as much as we possibly can. Yes, sir. Um, you also notice that Cole isn't here, and he really, really wanted to be here, so he wanted me to tell everyone that he loved it, and he's super mad that he's not on this episode because he wants to talk about it so bad. So if you guys are interested, we'll possibly do like a bonus episode, or maybe him and I will just like play some games, talk about the movie or whatever, be a little bit more casual. Yeah. Um, this episode is also, as the Snyder Cut is, rated R, so um, if you saw it, like I don't imagine most kids seeing this movie. Um, but yeah, so there's going to be like swearing and stuff, as which is unlike most of our other episodes, but... Listen, we just don't want to put those uh, parameters on us. So, um, yeah, we're going to make it a real brief um, kind of spoiler-free review because we just want we want to talk into the spo- like about the spoilers. This is a four-hour epi- like four-hour movie. There's a lot to dissect and unpack that we just want to gush about as uh, Snyder shills. So, um, <laughs> yeah, who wants to go first? What did you guys think of this movie? I, spoiler I mean, free? I mean, no need to stutter on it. You were going to say it. It's a four-hour epic. Like this is. Yeah. I I said and I still think that before before this movie came out I was always like Watchmen is Zack Snyder's masterpiece. Like that yep. is like his tour de force, the best film he's ever made, the one where he put the most like every ounce of his passion for filmmaking into that film. Agreed. Then I watched Agreed. Zack Snyder's Justice League and I was like no no no. This yeah. is Zack Snyder's masterpiece. Agreed. Not just <laughs> not just because, once again, the way that I feel about Watchmen, he kind of delivers again here where he just puts every bit of the passion he has for filmmaking into the movie, but also because of what happened, the journey to actually get the film made in the first place. This dude was on a mission. And as well, like to see the fans kind of rally together to make this happen. It's pretty amazing. I, I got to... I got to give credit where credit is due. There is a toxic side to the fan base, but at the end of the day, to see everyone kind of collectively collectively celebrating the Snyder Cut and the fact that it's pretty good is, uh, yeah. is, is great. Like, I am so excited and, like, happy to see that. And hopefully it means promising things for the future uh, in terms of seeing, like, yeah. a Just League 2 or 3 from Zack Snyder. That'd be great. But, yeah, it's just really cool to see the journey that he went on. And, of course... Like the fact that he dedicates the film to his to his daughter, oh, yeah. um, I thought that that was great. Uh, a lot of meaning behind that, and yeah, like this is this is without a doubt this is his Lord of the Rings. This is his epic. This is his masterpiece. Yeah, I I mean I wholeheartedly agree. Like I I don't know I, I like I had high expectations in the regard that like I love um, uh, BBS and Man of Steel. So after like enjoying both of those movies, I'm like was really excited to see Justice League back in 2017, and obviously that was Justice League was nothing like what I imagined or wanted. Um, and so when 
you know, it was basically like a dead dream that this movie was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and like, understandably yeah. so. Like it, it had such a troubled history because of what happened with Zack Snyder's family and with his daughter. Um, it was like he had to step out of the project, and I don't blame him. And it sucked that he deserved to finish that vision um, and was unable, unable to do that. But the fact that fans were able to rally around him and be like, you know, a lot of people don't like Zack Snyder. And yeah. even then, they were still able to pull this off. And like you said, Caduce, there was a toxic side to this fandom. Like, we even talked about it about a year ago when it was announced. Like, what does this mean? Like, are we allowing yeah. toxic fans to kind of create this happen? But yeah. there's so much positivity around it now. And Zack Snyder realizes that as well. Mm -hmm. That, the, like, even if we don't get Justice League 2 and 3, even though I would love to see the future of this DCEU because I, I love it leaps and bounds more than what we've been getting for the past four years or so ever since Justice League. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm just happy it happened. Like, I'm happy for Zack Snyder. I'm happy for his family. I'm, ha I'm happy for the people who work so hard and diligently on this movie, the cast, the crew. Like, it just makes me so happy and so rejuvenated on the DC Universe. Yeah. I, I just see this more than anything is that because everyone keeps saying like oh is this uh, allowing people to bully his studio into making a film and it's like I don't know I see less of that and more so of just the fact that a bunch of fans just wanted to see a director's vision and that's it like yeah exactly the end it wasn't about bullying a studio to make it happen it wasn't about and I know that some people have been putting out some maybe sarcastic but like weirdly toxic tweets like well if we could get this who knows what else we can ask for. But I think at the end of the day, like, WWE's probably not going to budge on too much more than this. And at least the fans got this. This was the one thing that pretty much if you were a fan of comic book movies, you knew about. You heard about the hashtag. You knew about the movement. And you knew that it was a thing that people wanted. And the fact that they got it is great. Yeah, going yeah. off of uh, what Grayson was saying earlier, you know, the, the negative side to this whole movement, you know, the last four years, Snyder's name has kind of been tainted a little bit just because yeah. that that demographic of people who was just constantly hammering on. Because I remember tweets prior to the announcement for this movie a year ago, and I I strictly remember replying to one saying, "Yeah, this isn't going to happen. Like, I'd love it to happen, mm -hmm. but it's not going to happen." Yeah. And then I just got attacked. Mm -hmm. I actually got viscerally like attacked mm -hmm. for saying that. It's like I literally said in the tweet, "I want to see it. I just don't think it will." Mm -hmm. And it, it's just unfortunate that part of the journey from the movie the experience that happened in 2017 to now it's unfortunate that from then till now it's been so negative but it's great that now it's such a positive thing it's night and day difference between you know four exactly. or five years ago where you know bvs really split up the the dceu fandom for the most part mm -hmm. and you know i'll i'll, I'll say this like I was one of the. I wasn't like toxic or anything, but I I didn't like love Batman versus Superman when it came out, and now I like after rewatches I do consider it to be like a masterpiece. Like I love that film. I went from not being a big fan of Zack Snyder and not really wanting to see any more of his DC movies, and now it's all I want for the future because it's so. Yep. His take on the superhero genre, comic book genre, is so refreshing compared to the regurgitated stuff we get you know from other franchises and um and i feel like for a while the dc movies have been pretty mediocre for the past few years yeah and getting to see like you know this as compared to what we've been getting recently is just so refreshing you can't help but just be happy for what he accomplished and the thing like kind of going back to what you guys were saying like the fans kind of sparked this this movement but it wasn't like the fans bullied WB into making a movie. The movie pretty much existed already. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, the groundwork and foundation was already there. There was a little bit, like, of additional photography. Um, I think that the ending of the movie was definitely shot later on. But, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, the thing existed, and people just wanted to see what he had already, you know, made. They just wanted to see what his vision was. And, you know credit to i don't know if you give credit to wb i've heard like i think this kind of got kind of came from more of at&t side wanting to get this yeah. done than it was actually wb um but i mean credit to them you know giving this an opportunity and hbo max happened to be like the perfect platform for yeah. it 
I was fan. not a subscriber to HBO Max until it got close to you know Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm. Now I love HBO Max; like it's my favorite streaming service. But it's a solid streaming. Yeah, service. I didn't buy it underrated. until I think last week, and I had been using my girlfriend's parents' one up until now, but yeah. I bought it finally. It's great. There's so much quality content on there, and like I mean, I got it because I knew it was coming down the line. I split it with a, a mutual friend of uh, of Caboose and I, um, and so that kind of helps dwindle down the price a little bit. Yeah. But um, it's so worth it, and like you know, like you were saying, like this is the perfect viewing format for it because it is it is like Caboose said, a four hour epic, and the reason theaters usually don't go for three hour or three hour plus long movies yeah. is because they can't get as many showings in theaters yeah. and that mm-hmm. causes a, like a revenue drop. And so they're like, well, we got to cut it down so we can get more showings out. So it makes more money. Exactly. Well, with HBO max, you don't have to worry about that limitation because you can watch it whenever, wherever, like, and that, like, that's one of the best things about and, it. Um, and not to get too outside of just our thoughts on the movie, but also be with the existence of HBO max and hopefully We'll see what the numbers are like and how much of a success Zack Snyder's Justice League was. But if it ends up being a pretty big success, HBO Max could become a home for like Snyder's vision for oh my God. future projects that Snyder kind of wants to back. You know, Please. a Ben Affleck yeah. Batman series about Deathstroke, Ugh. a Deathstroke series that, that Joe Manuel wanted to make, you know, or the, yeah. or the film that he wanted to make, maybe turn it into a show. Like there, this could become the new home for the Zack Snyder DCEU stuff. I'll take I it. I mean, hey, yeah. Peacemaker is getting a show, so yeah. I don't see why these properties, these characters, couldn't get it as well. Deathstroke, yeah. like they gotta fast track that. Like I don't know what the they rate really is, man. I, the yeah. costume is so just being wasted. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Just gathering dust in an AT and T uh, show floor, or whatever <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. So, but like, I guess that's kind of our whole thing. Like, we all universally. Mm-hmm enjoyed at the very least enjoyed i i love yeah it. like personally it's i loved it probably in my top five comic book movies now. wow i wow. i absolutely love that movie i actually kind of agree with you it, it, it's, oh my god it, yeah I, okay so when i think favorite comic book movies my mind immediately goes to like endgame where i'm sitting in the theater and i'm like super ecstatic but surprisingly enough with this movie i only had like a couple moments like that but the whole mm. four hours instead of being like on oh. my ed- on the edge of my seat excited i was locked Invested. on i could yeah. not i, I normally away. if yeah. i'm watching stuff at home i'm like on my phone looking at news or anything i could right. not i it felt almost sacrilegious doing that the mm-hmm. the only scenes that i did that in were scenes that like i had already seen yeah in, um it like that were already in the original cut because like you can definitely see like there's some similarities here but overall like it's a totally different movie i mean oh, it's yeah, double 100%. the length of the original can, can we get but, into the day before or are we getting no, I, uh, I was gonna i was gonna just say like one more thing okay like, okay, okay, okay. That you were saying about being invested <laughs> like so keenan and i were gonna watch it together but obviously he got an early copy and i was like dude watch it utilize <laughs> that like i'm like i want you to enjoy it feel so bad. my <laughs> you felt bad it was totally fine we didn't even end up watching it together anyway and it ended up being for the best but my dad and I watch it together, and of course, my dad and I are huge DC fans, and we're also huge fans of Man of Steel and BVS, nice. like Zack Snyder stuff. Yep. And so, we were. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people know. I don't even want to explain that. Like, I just want to be like, if you know, you know. Yeah. Yep. Um, but um, we were watching it, and I was like, or, "Okay." I told Keenan, I was like, "We're gonna watch the first half of it. You can come over tomorrow night, and we'll watch the last half of it, right?" And Keenan was like, "Okay, cool." We got like I think we got to the end of chapter or we got to chapter three and we're like all right let's watch one more chapter we'll finish the but the prologue in three chapters and, my, and I'm like we're sitting there and I'm like you want to watch one more my dad's like I'm down to watch the whole thing and he's like if we don't watch it all right now I'm going upstairs and I'm finishing it myself and I was like <laughs> and I texted him I was up. like we're watching the whole thing so yeah I was no, like please I, do I so tried good. to do that with my girlfriend <laughs> the other night and, and I was just like we just watched two parts and I, I'm sitting there telling her I'm like I'm not gonna feasibly be able to sit here and just say that. Yeah, it's yeah. You get you get halfway through and you're like, no, nah, I gotta keep going. I need more. Yeah. And you can take bathroom breaks and like, I mean, there was one point I like made a cup of coffee, came back and like kept on going, which is so great about HBO Max. But yeah, let's get into spoilers. Um, I have like a whole list of things that I want to talk about. I like just done that. Just like I, I literally woke up the next morning. I was like, I gotta talk about stuff. So, like, unless anybody wants to go let's, first, uh, I'm just gonna, caboose. Like, if you want to jump in real quick, because you gotta, yeah. you'll probably there's leave just, before. There's just one scene that I specifically wanted to talk about because I tweeted okay. about it, and I don't know if anyone saw the tweet, but like there is, there is a scene with the Flash that Ugh. is, it is the scene. 
for it's the comic book movies. Such a and, great and while movie. while I don't think Zack Snyder's Just League like ranks up there as one of my top favorite comic book movies of all time, that moment is up there as one of my favorite in any comic book movie. And and I think Dude, in yeah. general, because I wasn't the biggest fan of Ezra Miller's Flash when I watched the the theatrical cut, the Joss Whedon cut. Um, yeah. I think in general he's a lot better in this version of the movie. I don't think undoubtedly. He's, I, I don't. I would still wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a huge fan, but when he isn't this character that is trying to crack jokes every single time he has screen time. You know, when the yeah. when the going gets going, when it when things are are serious, when shit hits the fan, like his character of course stays within that tone. You know, doesn't try to break yeah. that tone with comedy. Um. And that's Zack Snyder, you know. I think that's 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 the yeah. director like Zack Snyder who's like, hey, listen, like this is a serious moment. We're gonna keep it serious, you know. Yeah. Um, he and, went from and being of course yeah. that climactic moment towards yeah. the end of the film when he kind of enters the Speed Force and and does what he does. I was like, this is please give me more of that in the Flashpoint I, movie. Yeah, I hate that. You know, since I've watched other the, the Flash show, in my mind, the Speed Force is literally just like trails of lightning, and that's it. But w- when I saw that scene, it's like, okay, this, th- this is this is the peak. Speed Force. Like this that's is the sick. Speed Force. It was right. Oh my god! Like I, 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 I had no idea what that scene was entailing, other than the snippets in the trailer where you could yeah. see the the ground forming. I thought he was going back in time. I mean. Let's be, yeah, he was. he was. He yeah. was. He literally yeah. was. He was going back in time like five minutes or something like that, which is crazy because I don't think they I, – I don't know. Regardless, it, it it was such a incredible scene. The music, everything about it. Oh, my God. It was it was so yeah. good. He went from being – There was being, a couple other scenes too. Going I was going to say like the, the theatrical cut, he was just there for kicks and giggles, really. Like I'm the fact so, that yeah. he was like, yeah. I just I just push people. Like that's it. Uh, he so really served no purpose other than that. I thought that, that was part of Zach's footage the first <laughs> nah. time I watched it. And then, because I watched the Justice League the day before, because I wanted to compare. Yeah. Ugh, I did the same it is, thing. It is. Ugh. So, it is uh, one of my favorite, speaking of Flash, real quick, I just want to say, like, obviously, like, that third act with him is, is awesome. But one of my favorite moments, actually, was when they were uh, going to dig Superman f- from his grave. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah. he was my hero. Like, you know, so as they're, they're going to get. And I'm like, that's that's more along the lines of what I want from flash as opposed to like the, the when whole, you even see that the whole, like, like when, go ahead. I was Sorry. just gonna say like the whole, like if you look at back at the theatrical cut, like when they're going to take Superman from the grave, his whole thing is just like, let's make pet cemetery jokes, you know? Yeah. I know. Um, whereas oh, this I one know. is like, this is that. more meaningful. And he's like, he is my hero, you know? Um, yes. Oh my it, God. It, I really loved cool. that moment. Yeah. 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 So and good. Also, one of my favorite things, as you hard. notice, is when they bring Superman back. Like all of them are like kind of in, a, in amazement, but Ezra Miller's Flash, he, he has the biggest grin on his He's face. So yeah. yeah, and you know what? And because I think that's in the the theatrical cut too. That shot of yeah. Ezra, that shot has so much more meaning given the context mm-hmm. of the scene exactly. when they're like digging up his grave. And I yep. love that because that would make sense if you were someone like Barry Allen who has like superpowers, who is the Flash, and you see someone like Superman who becomes essentially in in the world of the DCU the first kind of publicly known superhero you mm-hmm. would you would like look up to him you know that would mean exactly. like, so much to you because you would aspire to be that more than anybody you know and and the fact that they play into yeah. that they lean into that was so good i just it's stuff like that and especially as well the moment with uh, with cyborg and, oh. and that woman who was struggling you know the the woman who god was man like, that stuff yeah. where i'm like i cannot wrap my head around why they would cut that from the movie like i it's actually beautiful. if i if i tried my damnedest i couldn't make sense of why they would cut that from the theatrical movie like the theatrical version of the movie cyborg runtime was, that was literally it <sighs> so cyborg dumb. is so good in this agree movie. yeah I, oh, agreed percent i before like, my favorite before, part of sorry, the film I, sorry to cut you off grayson i just wanted to say this one thing oh no you're good with with the theatrical cut i remember because I think before that, Zack Snyder had said that uh, Cyborg was the heart of the film. Yep. Before He said that years ago. And I was like, okay, we'll see how this goes. And then, you know, the thing happened and the movie came out. And I was just like, I don't see how. What? I didn't <laughs> nah. get it. Like, he was, yeah. he was just like edgy, sad boy who was like, yeah. how could you let this happen to me, dad? And it's just like, uh, how? <laughs> how? Especially watching it. Like, okay, the scene where Diana meets with him 
is entirely different yeah. in the Snyder Cut than the theatrical cut. Because the theatrical cut, he's wearing the hoodie and the sweatpants, and he just walks out of the alleyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the Snyder Cut, he flies in, and he looks like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> with, the, with, with the weather box on his back like he's such a better character in this movie and i i completely understand how he's the quote-unquote heart of the movie his backstory really was so necessary to it see really that relationship uh, between him and his father losing his mother the fact that like if you look back at the theatrical cut he has conversations with his dad early on in the film and then yeah. like they just like they speak face to face and then in this one, he won't even look at his dad. And that's why he leaves him the recording. He's like, maybe you'll listen to me if you're not going to look at me. That's how, like, you know, oh, how man. ashamed of his father that. he is. Yeah. And in this one, and that, God, man, that whole relationship with his dad and, you know, the, the fact that they were to, like, find a way to kind of make amends without actually, like, having this, you know, you know, big discussion or anything like that when he's just like you're my father you know when he comes back to save his dad and and that look that he his father gives um victor when he ends up pretty much sacrificing himself i mean mean, god there's so much so many like i hate that like people think of Zack snyder is just like uh, he he shoots good action i'm like his film this film specifically has so much heart in it and um it, and I'm just amazed at what they were able to do with Cyborg, and I'm so disappointed that they cut so much out because they did such a disservice to his character. He was just and, yeah. there. And you know what? And you know what I loved about too about watching this is any time I recognized a Snyder shot from what I remembered through the theatrical version, it was like good parts of the movie. You know, like I remember my favorite the part of parts. the theatrical <laughs> cut was when they're fighting Superman. And the Flash is trying to sneak up behind him, and he, like, turns yeah. the eye. That was, like, Sick. my favorite part of the theatrical cut. And yeah. the fact that it was in this, I was like, that was Snyder. Of course it was Snyder. Like, he, the dude knows his action for sure. Yeah. But you're right, Keenan. He also, like, this movie is infused with a ton of heart, some real good character development for someone like Cyborg, a little bit for Flash, too. Um, mm-hmm. Even Aquaman gets a bit more to do. Like, there's some stuff with Volko there. You get a little more context about where he gets that trident, where he gets the armor, um, the way that they're oh, trying true. to push yeah. him to, like, you know, take on the throne. You know, it, it, like, Zack Snyder's Justice League kind of almost perfectly leads into Aquaman as well, when you think a about it. Bit. Yeah. A lot, a lot a better bit. than the theatrical version it, does, at least. One of my, my biggest. Except for Mira's voice. The, the British oh, accent. So the Mira British is the accent. one link so weird. between this movie and Aquaman that I. I that bothers me because I just watched Aquaman like a few weeks ago. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, her father is in that movie, but she says her parents were killed in the old war. Did she say that? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. See, that's that's interesting to me because then that means that James Wan wasn't on the same page with Snyder. King Atlanta, uh, or Queen Atlanta took her in. That's what she said. And I, yeah. and I, I heard that, and I'm just like, this this, this bothers well, my I mind. Well, I didn't hear about that. I didn't pick up on that, so I'm glad you did, because I haven't yeah. seen Aquaman in a few years. But, um, yeah, someone did mention that, that there's some weird disconnects between yeah. them. But that's what you get when it's like, they were establishing Aquaman based off of the 2017 Justice exactly. League. Yeah, so anything, a year later. Like, all this stuff, like, we don't get those scenes, you know? Yeah. Um, my problem isn't, though, with, like, like I'm Mara, like, the character of Mara... I'm fine with. I actually like empathize with, but I, because it's Amber Heard, yeah. Yeah. it physically angers me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I saw a tweet like, mm. where uh, it was that scene where Steppenwolf was choking her. And oh god! Oh god! <laughs> <The tweet laughs> I know what you're talking said, about. <laughs> the, I think the tweet was something like, "How can I you be the villain?" Steppenwolf. <laughs> it was like, "How can you be the How can you be the villain when he's doing us such a service?" <laughs> <laughs> it was that was so crazy. funny. It's like, oh my Spe- gosh. Speaking of Steppenwolf, though, dude. Oh my god. Leaps and bounds better. Yeah. Not, so much not better. the biggest fan of the I, design, but in terms of presentation and like how villainous he is, really, you know, they like do the a really good job. Not the biggest fan of the design. There's like some. There's okay. So with the design, okay. yeah, there's some fifty fifty nuance there. I like his armor. I ha- I don't like his face. Yeah, I was gonna I say wish the face looks tiny. Put, look, <laughs> yeah, it like, does. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't mind like, the face because I, I don't know. I didn't mind the whole look at all. I uh, mean, I mean, the problem is like because I know what the 2017 version of Steppenwolf looks like. I think yeah. had they combined the armor with the more like human like head, yeah. I would have been more down with it. Yeah. But the fact that like we have those two versions, either way, in terms of his character development and his action, like the dude, like the, the villain is compelling. Yeah. And I love yeah. Steppenwolf yeah. for that. 
Yeah. Steppenwolf much, is definitely much better. A big upgrade. Oh my gosh. And you can't you can't I'd... talk that much about Steppenwolf without like I mean Dark Side man. Oh. Holy shit. That's another that... thing where I'm like, oh. how could you cut this from the movie? Like no. it is so important it's so important to the character of Steppenwolf that that he like he wants to serve Dark Side, he wants to make right by Dark Side. But also like Dark Side's fucking cool, man. Like, wh why would yeah. we cut this from the movie? I, he looks so Dark cool. Dark Side fucks. <laughs> I, I don't understand uh -huh. why in the theatrical cut, Joss Whedon thought it was, like, smart to make the mother boxes. Like, for some reason, Steppenwolf was kept calling them mother. Mother. Yeah. Yeah, it, really, it was, that's like, so annoying. I didn't get that. He didn't do that at all in, in, the, in the Snyder Cut. But, no. Yeah. And he's had, like, a little tease of Dark Side in that one. I was like, that is yeah. so crappy and shitty I, you know th and that's dark side's one of the main reasons why i want to see the future of oh 100 yeah. yeah because like because like he's like we, he i mean let's be real dark side like thanos was based off dark side so dark side is the dc's thanos or yeah. thanos is is marvel's dark side mm. he's the biggest bad right but steppenwolf was such a compelling villain like for trying to like be redeemed in dark yeah. side's eyes mm -hmm. but keenan i sent you that that uh that video oh my god and there's like man. the part where he's talking to the guy and he's just like remember you still owe fifty thousand worlds and he's like worlds what the <laughs> fuck it's like i thought you were gonna say dollars <laughs> Dude, that was just like, like the best video i, I, I saw, saw i saw a post on instagram about that where it's like he looks like he's about to shit himself when he says fifty thousand oh <laughs> <laughs> when dark side when dark side like comes through like the weird tele projection the mother thing. box yeah. like s slab yeah. thing yeah Every, all of the pair demons are like frightened and he's like like he's scared like yeah, Wolf is legitimately he's terrified, terrified. Mm. he literally like kind of stumbles backwards and his armor recedes it's Takes like a, a dog mm -hmm. showing its belly almost plus that kind of... line dude says i oh, wiped a yeah. hundred thousand planets like oh my god anti-life oh. equation oh man and uh, too, yeah. like, and you know what too, like, even the anti-life equation stuff. Like, if you're Joss Whedon, I understand he didn't want to show Dark Side because he's trying to do his Avengers shtick. He's trying to like put, like, plant the seeds, not show the full thing, right? Because that's what he wants to yeah. do. But like, the anti-life equation is the MacGuffin. It is the Infinity Stones, the Infinity Gauntlet. Yep. How do you not at least even have that in the theatrical? Like, it's just it blows I, my mind. It blows. I my saw mind. a tweet about that actually, and uh, someone said that they think with. Zack Snyder's dark side, the anti-life equation is what gave him the uh, what are his beams called again? I'm completely blanking. Um, dark side's like laser eyes. What are they called? The, the Omega, Omega beams. beams. Yeah. Omega yeah. Beam. Someone oh, was saying so that, yeah. that the anti-life equation is what gives him those for some reason, but huh? that doesn't make any sense. I saw a tweet about that. Yeah. I was like, that doesn't make any sense because his eyes are glowing red the whole time. Yeah. So he already has them. No, yeah. that I don't think so. Like, I think I know why people were saying that because, like, when you go to the nightmare sequence, the uh, uh, Zack Snyder implies that the anti-life equation is what's caused Superman to like be on Dark Side's yeah. side. Yeah. He also kind of like blackmailed him with like Lois Lane dying. Yeah. And people were like, "Oh, his eyes are glowing red because of the anti-life equation." And I was like, "Or his heat vision." It's the same. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, he, I don't he shoot know. lasers out of his eyes. <laughs> did, did you guys yeah, get the? Uh, nothing new there. Do you guys get the Starro reference in that movie a little bit? Was there? No. Someone no, said that Zack might have put a slight Starro reference with the interrogation robot because it looked kind of like the, the oh. small starfish that gets on their faces. I mean, someone maybe. said it was like a, it was like a little like. Little that was a little weird though. That was a, just random. Steppenwolf was has a random little mind control robot. Like, what's that about? <laughs> I hate that that reminded me of Transformers for some reason. Oh my god! Oh my god! In Transformers <laughs> Two with. That's crazy. That was all I thought of. I don't want to talk but about it. But I, I, um, do, no. I do want to mention, because you were talking about the, you know, the glowing eyes, the scene with the Omega beams and all yeah. that. Like, I thought that scene was sick. I saw someone pointed out, too, that the actual laser that comes out of his eyes, it spells end with the Omega beams. Oh, uh, oh wow. Which is, which like is a bit of a that is what like the anti-life equation is, right? That's uh, I true. Know. I don't know, something like that. That is true. Yeah. Um, but then even just that whole sequence when Cyborg whole... sees the future yeah. and he sees what's like, uh, wants to come. Wants to stop the revival oh, of Superman. I just wants want. To stop it. I just want a whole movie set in the nightmare <sighs> sequence. I know. I want. I want to okay, get there, the and sequence. then it give me a whole Please. movie there. You know. Please. Dude, I don't care if we get anything else. If they like scrap the, the that timeline, like if they scrap the timeline that we watched and just were like, hey, we're gonna make this movie <laughs> yeah. just about the nightmare stuff. Hundred percent down. Like, 
I'm yeah. good. If I mean, they want to do that Zack for Snyder HBO. Said. I'm not, I yeah, think like, he said that's the, the sequel would have been an entire nightmare sequence movie. Well, he would have so, it. I do have a theory yeah, it to, to that, too. Go ahead, Cause, so, so my theory behind that is just that from what we know, like, Zack Snyder's Justice League was is pretty it was pretty much done being shot. There might have been like a few minor things that he probably wanted to fix up and then do VFX and stuff like that. Voiceover, score, all that good stuff. But we know for certain that he shot that nightmare sequence well after like sometime in the last year probably mm-hmm. he, he yeah, shot yeah. that. Um so he really it wasn't necessary for him to shoot that and I think he wanted to like lay that out there like, hey, we we could do this, like we could make, you know, what whatever they decide, a series or, or a movie just about this. And it gave, like, I think he did it specifically to, like, get fans to want something like that. And maybe there will be enough momentum to where he could actually, they would actually greenlight yeah. something like that. Because he, he didn't absolutely need to do it. His movie was done. It's an epilogue. It's essentially a post-credit scene, like an extended post-credit scene. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like he kind of just wanted to like throw that out there like, hey, this is what I kind of have in mind for what you could possibly see if they want to do this. And hopefully enough fans, like I for one definitely want to see that, are yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Me too. for it. I, I think you're yeah. absolutely right as well because I remember reading an interview. I don't know who with, but I saw a tweet of a quote where Zack Snyder said – WB didn't want him to shoot additional scenes. They were like, just finish your yeah. movie, do your thing. But he was like, no, nah, I want to shoot some more scenes. So I like, he, I, think I have he did a feeling, it against their will. You know, <laughs> since he got the green light to do it, he's like, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, these motherfuckers. I'm going to, I'm going to film something <laughs> that's going to make people want to see my sequel and they're never going to shut up about it. You guys are never going to hear the yeah. end of it until you have to hire me to make another one. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, weird, though, exactly like, what happened. I've seen interviews where he said like his run with DC is over, but then at the same time he said like nothing's set in stone. So it's like he wants yeah. to come back, but he says he's done. That, so it's like it's I don't all leverage. Like, yeah. yeah, in that same interview that Caboose is referencing to, he says that Raymond, where he's like, um, you know, I never thought I was going to be able to finish this, so never say never. Exactly. Like, um, yeah. But um, Caboose, I know you got to run out here pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, what was what was your like? Any last takes or, like, what was your favorite part of this movie before you got to head out? Uh, I mean, like I said, like, the Flash moment was really great for me. That's just straight up one of the coolest moments I've seen in, like, a comic book movie. Yep. Uh, I also, mm-hmm. although I did find it a little weird because, like, it the scene didn't make too much sense to me. But, like, still seeing Martian Manhunter in this movie was, like, Sick. was pretty sweet. Yeah, it was great. You know, like, to, that's great. and that's another thing where that was that last part at the end of the movie that was uh that was additional photography you know like that yeah. wasn't in yeah. the original cut maybe the the first time we see him was but uh that end bit wasn't uh wasn't in the original cut it was something that Zack Snyder wanted to shoot additionally so i hope that we get to see some setup like that pay off in some way because to see martian manhunter like fighting alongside the rest of the league that would be really cool so yeah seeing that oh, cameo yeah. was awesome especially cuz like the whole tagline was unite the seven That's and right. only six justice league members exactly. so like he's the seventh technically mm mm-hmm. mhm yeah, mm-hmm. um, dope. But yeah, yeah overall, I really loved the movie. Agree. Really loved it. I think I'm I'm just happy in general that Zack Snyder got to finish it. Um, and I hope I hope that enough people ask to the point where WB kind of reconsiders and makes him come back. Yeah. You know, even if it's just supposed to be seen as like an Elseworld thing and not connected to the rest of the DCU films that they've been making thus far, uh, I'm still down for that. Give me a Justice League two and three. Bring me to the nightmare sequence like in real time. Uh, show me how we get there. Show me what happens after the fact. Like, I, I just want to see it all. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, well, Caboose, I'll let you go, but where can people find you at most notably? Yeah, yeah. You can find me youtube.com slash caboose, twitch.tv slash caboose, Twitter and Instagram at caboose ek. Always tweeting and talking about all sorts of fun stuff, comic book related. Sick. Sweet. Sounds good, man. Thanks well, for having me on, man. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Of course. Have a good rest you of your again, podcast. Caboose. Looking forward to listening to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, of course, man. We'll see you. All right. See you later. See you, man. Peace. All righty. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? We were talking uh, talk about the nightmare chance. sequence, like, in yeah. full detail. So, yeah, we were like, oh, man. So, okay, so I, I'm sure you guys were pretty similar. I think Keenan and I talked about this yesterday um, when we watched Falcon Winter Soldier, by the way. Awesome. Anyway, digress. We'll talk <laughs> about a, a later date. Um, but we were talking about how, like, the entire movie – 
and I'm sure Raymond, you were the same way, where we're like sitting there waiting and like you get that one glimpse yep. of with Cyborg, you're like, oh, here it is, right? Like here's where we're gonna get the, like the predict, like the nightmare sequence. And they show like a little bit of it and then it goes back and you're like, oh wait, it's not gonna show it now? And then you're yeah. like sitting there the entire movie and you're like, there's like 10 minutes left in this movie. <laughs> you're like, yeah. or like yeah. 15 minutes. You're like, when is it gonna show it? And then you like, it just cuts and you're like, Whoa, 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 okay, what's going on? I, yeah, I, uh, 30 minutes, I think it was literally the scene where they were all standing on the silo. I paused it, and I was like, how much is left? Because where's the nightmare sequence? Yeah. I had, like, <laughs> right. 30 minutes left, and I'm like, what could be left? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I thought it was for sure going to be, like, midway through the movie. Exactly, and like, they, similar to the BBS sub- one, where, like, Batman right. just fell asleep. Yeah, especially because he mentions it in chapter six. He's like, I had a dream. Like, I was sitting right here, and there was Barry, like, right here. I, remember, I loved him referencing that. I loved I'm, the like, pain, okay, too. Off. I'm like, because, like, you know, we you all are obsessed knew, like, especially... with that scene. So I was like, I, I've oh, been waiting for I that payoff that for years, and finally he yeah. mentions it to someone else. Ugh. Yeah. And so then we get that, we, we go straight into it, and we see Batman, and then, like, one by one, we're seeing more of, like, his kind of post apocalyptic posse. <laughs> yeah. Um, the the uh, so sick. We, we... Nightmare Justice League, essentially. Yeah, basically. So you've got him, of course, you've got Flash looking sick in that suit. My God, oh, it, it amazing. is dope. It Love is that amazing. design. It's awesome. I've got Hot Toy, Keenan. <laughs> and, yeah, don't, dude, dude, I saw the regular Flash Hot Toy from like the Justice League, like the first Justice League one, and I was like, mm, do I want that? But uh, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah. And then we get Cyborg with a sick-ass minigun on his back, of course, going to full war machine. Then so we get happy Mara, he was there. And then we get... Deathstroke looking like all grizzled with a mohawk and then the gray armor. <laughs> yeah, the like the just yeah, it's totally all worn faded. down. Yeah. Yeah, and then we get Joker who revealed and god, listen, I'm just going to say it, like this movie redeemed Jared Leto's Joker for 100%. Me. Absolutely. <laughs> I was this was one of those two scenes that I was mentioning. The first one that I that really got me crazy was the Flash one. This mm-hmm. was the other one. The conversation between Batman and Joker, I I, I couldn't stop. Like I I was losing my shit that whole time. Yeah, dude. So I yeah that dialogue. So we Keenan and I we were like talking last night, and we weren't even watching the movie. We were like we had something on in the background, and then we were like talking about it, like because we couldn't like we were just jumping the gun, mm-hmm. and we knew we were gonna get into it anyway. And we're yeah. sitting there, and I was like, dude, that nightmare sequence, and, he, and I was like. I kind of want to rewatch it, and he's like, "Pull it up." <laughs> and so yeah, I was we like, just pull it I'm up down. on HBO, <laughs> and we just it's, watched it till the so very good. end. And we were like, "Dude, ah!" Uh, and like the the conversation there, and then he's just like, "Oh, contrary, like my little fish stick, like he does know about loss, like his fa- like a father, a mother, an adopted son, like the line about him." Be saying, careful. Like, Why would you send a, a boy wonder to do a man's job? And I'm like, "Oh, oh, God, it's so good, it's so good." And mm. then. Batman going absolute ham because we know this version of Batman. Like, I'll fucking killing. kill you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he literally that says, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. And, and and I've seen, like, before I, like, jumped the gun, like, yeah, I was just so happy with that scene. And then and then Superman flies in. Oh, my and, God. Oh, also, random thing I wanted to mention. So he hands him the card as a truce. And I mentioned this to Keenan. And I don't know yeah. if anybody, I'm sure someone yeah, has identified this. Yeah, it's ripped this. in the previous Nightmare sequence. Oh, yeah, is I didn't it? know that. Yeah. I thought it was when it, when it shows it was... Superman holding Batman's cowl in the Justice League Hall of uh, Fa- Hall of Justice. That's what it is. Um, the Hall card of Fame. is ripped flying. <laughs> oh, okay. It. So I okay. So random. So I was gonna say something differently. Oh, okay. The one in the one in BVS, it's on his assault rifle. Yeah. So he already has and it, and it's it's intact. So yeah. So that means the the timeline thus far of the nightmare sequence is Justice League: The End. The, well, technically, sorta. Then you kind of get like the middle parts of like Superman turning evil. Then like him standing over the Hall of Justice, and uh, but like in between that is the BBS version, like, yeah, of, of and that. So I get the um, feeling with that timeline in BBS with the nightmare sequence. I think that everyone else is dead. <laughs> like oh, I think yeah. it's just Batman at that point. Because I mean, he, yeah, oh, that's and sad. that that scene where we saw <laughs> Superman holding the cowl is probably after he kills him. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, mm. that's true. Cause he cause he rips the cowl off in BBS and then yep. laser eyes. Um, yeah, but the sequence was so dope, and I'm like, I just need more of this. And speaking of Jared Leto's Joker, I was telling Keenan this last night. 
What I love about Jared Leto's Joker now is, first of all, his design is in line with the way he acts because yes. he's more... So here's the thing. like With Heath Ledger's Joker... He's scary, but he's scary because he's intimidating, right? Yeah. Like, he's a very intimidating presence. Like, he's not really, like, I don't think the Jared Leto's Joker, or I mean, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker is creepy per se, but he's unsettling. Whereas yeah. Jared Leto's Joker is legitimately, like, something you would see at, like, a, like a horror um, or, like, he, a haunted house, you know? The way I would describe it is, like, Heath Ledger's Joker, he's scary, but he's also a little bit more calculated. And he's, he's an not, anarchist. like, he's... He's very in control of, like, what's going on. However, with, like, Jared Leto's Joker, he definitely sees, seems like a patient that escaped from Arkham. Like, he's a little oh, bit... He's like, nice. He's a little bit of a mental patient, you know? He's got some seriously, like, serious problems. And the way he's dressed really kind of, like, you know, did he have perfectly... The, did he have the grills that he he had in Suicide Squad? I didn't... He didn't no. His teeth are just, his, like, black. His teeth almost, almost look bloody. Yeah, they... Yeah, yeah. They, black yeah i completely I prefer, forgot about I that mean, i was like wait does he have grills or not they probably yeah, got no tattoos out. long amazing. hair the red like instead of just red lips he has red like around his lips which i think are really cool i also think his laugh is so disturbing like it's not it's meant creepy. to be psychotic it's meant to be just like he's like ah, 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 and you're just like uh, oh, I uh, like yeah, you're like, oh I, like i hate that you know and like you it's can meant tell, to like, give everybody you, like, in the sense crew of fear 100 percent. Right, like it's supposed to make your skin crawl, you know? Like, um, and, and I love that. And then also he's got the vest on with all the police badges. You like, know yeah. Jim's is in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, I oh, man, I didn't think sure about that. There. Jim Gordon is um, definitely in there. Yeah, it has to be. Um, and, like, yeah, he's just... His, also, his dialogue, like, the way he's talking is very Jokerish. Like, not even necessarily yeah. his dialect, but, like, his, what he's actually saying. Like, the way he speaks. He's just the bigger very, man. It's very, yeah. um, I don't know why my mind is telling me this, but the way he speaks reminds me of how a Lego Joker would speak, <laughs> like from a Lego <laughs> Batman game. I don't know why. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I imagine it. Is that um, Galifianakis from the Lego Batman movie? No, from like the games. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, I guess I was going to go ahead and jump, like, go ahead and jump in and say, uh, Henry Cavill as Superman is the best. 100%. Yeah. I love him. I, I, the way I he shows got back, emotional so many times in this movie. Okay, so that reminds me. Speaking of emotions and and heart, and that we were mentioning earlier. So in in the theatrical cut that was released in 2017, when Clark comes back and he's on the farm, and his mom shows up, the the scene is literally just, "Is it really you?" Yeah, it is. And then it cuts away. Yeah. And this one, Clark, Martha, Lois, they embrace each other so happy and it's like just a nice peaceful moment of just yeah i'm back and it's it's so much better i i was this close to crying and the only reason why i didn't is because the scene was finally like there's a reason they brought me back and i was like okay i guess i'm not um yeah but jesus it this movie <laughs> so that's uh, that scene's really good the scene where when they're bringing him back and um actually before they're any, before they're even bringing him back when they're talking about oh yeah when they're all talking about the projection him? oh my god uh, it's i remember so much i got better. chills yes uh and then when they put him in the kryptonian ship and the picture of jonathan is like submerges in the water i got so emotional i was like Ooh. well that that and scene was also them, in the theatrical cut but this version even though it was only it's like almost exactly the same just because this is a different version it just hits much better is it really in the theatrical yeah. it's there for yeah. like a split okay. second but it, it, there's no music or anything it's just the sound of it dropping in the liquid that's it oh uh, okay that's why well but then you get him on the like on the mothership on like the kryptonian ship looking going down through the halls and it's playing the music and you uh, hear jor-el and you and, hear uh, uh jonathan. jonathan that's his name yeah <laughs> yeah like and you're you just like that? I don't understand. Dude, I don't know. And then he gets that black suit and he flies up into space and like like kind of just like almost uh Jesus like Jesus yeah. pose in front of the Literally, sun, which is probably my favorite shot in the entire movie. Yeah. Ton I There's always that. some biblical references with uh or parallels Superman. with Superman. I mean BVS yeah, he likes to do when he dies, there's like two like electric posts that look like crosses <laughs> behind him in the background. You can yeah. see that. Yeah. And even even the church in Man of Steel yep. is like a lot of biblical references there, but um, and then Superman just kicks ass. Oh <laughs> he just, when he shows up to defend Cyborg, 
when oh. like uh, Steppenwolf's about to throw his axe in his back. And Cyborg, like, even when, like, Superman takes that blow and it does absolutely nothing, Cyborg's still focused on, like, what's going on. So he definitely would have killed Cyborg. He was not turning around to de- defend himself at all. Yeah. But when he shows up, I'm like, because I was, I, I, at that point in time, I don't know why, but it, like, I kind of just got so into what was happening in that moment that I kind of forgot about Superman. So when he did yeah, show up, I was, I, like, I, I agree. jaw-dropping. Yeah, yeah it, it was, it was a sudden shock, because... In in the theatrical cut, you can kind of tell that he's about to come back, because like they're all kind of screwed. Yeah. And Aquaman and Diana are on the bottom, and Cyborg's about to get killed, and he literally gets ripped in half before Superman shows up in the theatrical cut. And he's like, I'm, <sighs> I'm a big fan of Justice everything, with my CGI beard, and it's just like everything. Ugh. Of, everything about Superman in this film was so much better because he became like this legend when when he passed. Like everybody saw him as. I know they tried to do that with the the original cut of it or the theatrical cut, but like, like if we can like start with Superman, we have to go back to the beginning of the film when Superman does die and Batman has tears in his eyes when he sees what's happening. I don't know if you caught that, but his like eyes are watery. I didn't see that. And that, that whole no. freak, that yeah, his eyes are like watering when he sees that he was killed. Oh wow! Pay close attention. Yeah, he's got tears in his eyes, and I thought that that was like really cool. And then that whole sequence when he's yelling to kind of set up like what's gonna like the plot of the film which is basically like these mother boxes weren't gonna awaken until superman was dead because he was you know what was keeping them asleep this whole time but the whole thing with him like screaming and it going across the entire earth like was so beautiful really set the tone for what the actual plot of the film was going to be that's one of the questions i had with the movie is like the mother boxes were per the plot of these movies planted before superman even arrived on the planet and they were asleep prior to yeah that. so how did they even know of his existence and why did i don't I mean, understand they're living machines i guess that's true they're pretty sentient so they probably were like oh, okay <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's good point i mean but like i'm totally on board with you there keenan and um and then yeah like when he towards the end like and he's just like punching like Steppenwolf he just went over and ham. over, and then bzzz, it cuts his like ear his or whatever horn off. Horn off. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. in the scene when he's on the ground, the amount of blood behind Steppenwolf. Oh my god! It's like a little pool of blood around him. It's gnarly. The the third act in the actual defeat of Steppenwolf is a million times better than the theatrical cut. I don't know if you can remember oh, yeah. Grayson because it's been a while since you saw it, but the way Steppenwolf dies is because. He has fear, and the parademons can yeah, smell his fear, and they all attack him. Like that's yeah, it. Like, one, all the parademons come and attack him, him because he has fear, and they smell fear. And he's like, mm-hmm. "How is this possible?" And then, like all the parademons just come in and like just kill him. Or Bro, whatever. I don't even remember that. I think I repressed so much of that. Movie. This one, <laughs> freaking so. Wonder Woman, decapitates him. His head goes Sick. rolling into this portal with dark side dark side just steps on his head i'm like just God, this is so head. much better I love yeah dark side is like you guys have your win but like i'm coming back yeah, he literally like, he doesn't even <coughs> literally he doesn't right even after Steppenwolf is dead he's like okay i'll right, cool. not gonna Thanks. help you i'll like, do I'm it myself <laughs> basically basically yeah <laughs> um yeah one I, thing I, i'm glad still, that isn't in this it, movie man. was that pointless plot with the russian family we didn't need oh that. my god that was, that was like i i saw i the, forgot about that because i watched it with my girlfriend <laughs> yeah, tough. the day before like i said and i told her like this literally doesn't have any meaning it's just kind of here like and it keeps popping totally up think, like early on in the film it's not just yeah, the they, third act they set they, that they, up they, way they, early yeah they start it once steppenwolf gets to the silo and he puts the first yeah. cube in yeah that, they totally wow. added that in to pad their time Hundred percent, and they just kept on throwing it in like throughout the film. They're like, oh, "Let's go and check on this family over here," and they're just like, "The girl like gets a can of bug spray out of <laughs> out of God. underneath the sink or whatever or the cabinet." That's to, like I guess, it's fight. It's basically demons. like Age of Ultron if they were introducing Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, but if they were not relevant whatsoever and would never come back ever. Exactly, again. <laughs> like that basically is. Joss Whedon's like, all right, we're back in Sokovia. Let's 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 sew some twins again. The original uh. Justice League really is like a like a half-assed attempt of combining the first two Avengers movie, but making it Justice League. That's literally what it is. It's yeah. there are two things but from that good. movie that I, I I liked and um 
one of them I'm a little upset didn't transfer over because technically it was a Zach shot and the other one was just a new shot. Mm -hmm. um, I love the beginning sequence of the Snyder Cut with Superman's scream because Jesus Christ, I, I don't know what it was, but it, it sent chills the entire time. I, I, yeah. I don't know how I was so engrossed in watching sound waves going through the world. I just was. But yeah. I am honestly kind of a fan of the that like montage sequence with the song in the, the theatrical cut that like I like that too I liked it I, I thought it was a good touch but I think it was the way they handled his death in this one was better because it already had passed so like yeah. I don't know why they're we, and we that. see that we see that in BBS exactly like, we so see... there's no it's not necessary um, right. but then the last shot was Superman uh, when he flies off and he opens his shirt up um, I understand that the black suit is a huge sign of like the rebirth of Superman but I didn't really see him as keeping the suit on after that either. fight and I was like it should have been the red and blue one like it should have been that one it's I, a little I was upsetting. Having, it's not... him having the black suit for like oh, yeah but then when I saw like the thing I was like it's gonna be red and blue and I was like oh it's still black and silver okay <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't like upset or anything, but it's like it's the one thing I wish. I mean, it's they'd... a dope suit for sure. Oh yeah, it's like... fantastic. But I don't see Superman using that suit all the time. Um, off topic, um, because we're about fifty minutes in, and I still have a little bit more that I want to talk about. Um, we kind of already touched upon Deathstroke, and like Caboose was saying, how good he looked. Dude, I want that Batman Deathstroke movie so bad. Speaking of Batman, um, he doesn't kill anymore because the Bat Tank. I think the only reason they added that scene in is because he captured criminals and they're in front of the bat tank and he uses the lights to show it. They aren't dead; they're like tied up. So he, he like he like efficiently doesn't kill humans anymore. Wait, yeah, he, What are you talking about? So the, the shot the... with him on the bat tank from um, at the very end, the yeah, lights yeah. of the bat tank are are lit up on two criminals tied up to each other back to back. Yeah, and I I, oh, I, I saw a tweet okay. about that. It's like so he doesn't kill anymore. And that's gonna uh, change. Got, and, exactly. <laughs> that's the, and that's the thing. Go, go ahead, ahead, Grayson. I know you had more points. <laughs> you go for it. I was just gonna say, like, there's this whole thing, and I'm getting really, really sick of it. I personally think Zack Snyder really does understand these characters and understands how to make them realistic. And so there was constantly this complaint in BVS where Batman was killing, right? And I get it because Batman isn't supposed to kill. That's like one of his things. But I'm when you realize, you have to realize that the BVS version of Batman was based on the Dark Knight Returns, who is a Batman that literally snaps Joker's neck. All right? Kills Joker. He kills people. And especially when he's been Batman, this Batman has been around for 20 years, and he has lost everyone he has ever loved. He and especially, like, an entire city is destroyed... I could see him killing very easily. In fact, I don't think I don't know if a real life Batman could have that much willpower not to kill. And I kind of like that he does kill. But then Superman comes in, and when he realizes what he's done, he quits killing. But in the yeah. nightmare sequence, when everything has gone bad again, he starts killing again. Like I like that. That makes sense because that means like he's like Superman he, gave him hope. Exactly. That's he realized what it was. like Superman doesn't do like wouldn't do this. Like I. I should be better. Like, we can be better. Like, we have to. Um, That's literally the line he says. <laughs> exactly. And and so I, I love that. And so I'm so sick of this whole thing of, like, oh, ba Batman killing. Like, okay, he kills the parademons, and I'm pretty sure he kills parademons in the comics anyway because they're does. just mindless drones. They're, they're already dead. They're, oh, are they? In the Snyder Cut, they're, like, reanimated dead people. Yeah. Oh, they were okay. people, yeah. and now they're turned into these. Yeah, so they're technically not. He's not killing people or things. He's killing okay. a corpse. And see, I'm cool. Like when he picks up a parademon laser rifle and starts shooting people. And That's I, just anyway. I started blasting. Batman I'm down with being it. Being badass as fuck. <laughs> yeah, and then so when people like I saw a comment on a TikTok and it was of the nightmare sequence and they were like, "Oh, great! They made Batman worse." I'm like, if this was a comic book, okay, and it wasn't a movie you wouldn't be bitching and complaining about it because yeah. you'd be like, this is a really cool El Elseworld story. This is a really cool take on Batman. Do you know how many comics there are where Batman kills people? There's a lot, all right? People, it's not a new thing. People literally base <laughs> their whole opinion on Batman solely on, like, the main universe, Batman. The Dark Knight, also. Like, yeah. they just based yeah. off the Dark Knight. That's Batman. I'm he doesn't kill. It's like... Those ew. are the people that, like, they think that the Dark Knight, Dark Knight is 
the greatest film to ever exist you know yeah that's and that's like, their I, only interpretation and vision of batman and i'm like that's great keep like keep saying how great that is and keep loving those movies but this is something different and you have to allow yeah. characters to like you have to allow filmmakers to evolve and like be able to do different takes on stuff you can't keep retreading the same thing over and over exactly what Zach, Zach, Zach snyder actually did was just add more inner conflict to batman you know and it's sometimes i think it's okay to disagree with your heroes at some point in time with what you're seeing absolutely like when exactly. I, as an audience member i want to like see my heroes and be like i do not agree with you killing but I understand yeah. what you're doing. Like, I can still be entertained by it, and I want my hero mm-hmm. to do better. So, like, I can understand people being upset by the Batman killing because it is wrong. Like, you don't want your heroes to do that. And yeah. th- that's the reason yeah. I love, like, the Daredevil series, like, especially the, the ending the of... Yeah, the ending of Daredevil, you know, the fact that Matt won't kill Kingpin, those are really impactful. And I disagree with Batman his, killing. Exactly, but you got to go through this journey with the characters, and I think with Zack Snyder's yeah. films in particular, and I learned this along the way, it's like you have to be patient with what he's doing, um, because he's doing he's he's storytelling in a very unconventional way. He doesn't do the same like hero's journey that everybody else does, where you have a character who uh, you know goes through some sort of trials and tribulation, and then they like you know take the call to action to become a hero, and then maybe they you know experience some sort of conflict that you know brings them down like hit he doesn't follow the same cycle you know the same hero's journey and you see that with superman where like superman immediately has like a lot of inner conflict and it took him and he says it in the justice league movie i have a second chance meaning that yeah. he didn't necessarily succeed with his first chance and now we're starting to see this more hopeful superman that we wanted to see it didn't start off that way we had to like be patient and see where the journey took us. Oh, Superman it's or Batman? Un- He's both Superman. of them. Or okay. Both in this one in particular, but like you know, it it kind of it doesn't help that we didn't get to see Batman go through what he went through, so that way we can sympathize or empathize with him a little bit more with why he does yeah. the things that he does. It is a little bit jarring for people who aren't like as invested in keeping up with what's going on with these films. But yeah, my overall point is like Zach's. Um, way of storytelling is very unconventional and you have to be patient with these characters and now we see this more hopeful superman and he's like he said he has a second chance he's not gonna waste it and you get what you want out of superman in this movie like he no longer has like that like should i do this should i do that like a lot of people were upset with like him letting his dad die um in man of steel it's not a superman thing to do but it's very early on and he's it's a different take and you know now yeah, looking back yeah. on it with this second chance he's not gonna allow things like that to happen it's just unconventional you have to be patient with Zack snyder same thing with like the whole batman killing you know now he's not killing anymore so yeah it's all it's about a, it's the story thing. for him and it's like people don't really yeah. understand that because I, I think i think one way to kind of explain what you're trying to say is like when you say be patient you're not gonna just get your batman that you want in the first movie like Every yeah. every story writer has their own story that they want to tell, mm-hmm. and that doesn't necessarily mean oh yeah, Batman just right out the bat is stopping Penguin and tying him up with a rope. No, like yeah. Ben Affleck's Batman lost Robin, he lost his parents. He's going to murder every single criminal he can. And it's like a it's a very realistic take on Batman. Exactly. Like it's like okay, this Batman, he's just sick of it. Like he's just tired of it. He's like screw it, I don't care anymore. Like I just I want these people to die. Because, because they, his old way like, didn't work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He could have killed Joker and oh. Jason Todd or Dick Grayson, whoever it is. I think it's Jason Todd I, would still be I alive. Think, I think Zach said it, that this the Robin that died was Dick. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Like, it, yeah. Either way, I mean, it's just like a nuanced thing. But still, like, I think it. What I really like about all the Justice League is like, yeah, they're all kind of like down on their luck. Like, I think mm-hmm. the only people that really aren't are 
um, Wonder Woman and Flash. Yep. Like I think they're the only two people that are like genuinely like hopeful again. And Batman is Batman is the one that unites the Justice League, and he's hopeful again now. Yeah. But Aquaman, Cyborg, and Superman, like, well, Superman yeah. gets to that as well with his second chance. But especially like they all have a troubled past. They're all human people, and so like one of my favorite things is people also complain about this in Man of Steel is Superman kills Zod, but he didn't want to kill yeah. Zod. Yeah. Like he, he literally like. I'm thinking of myself being Superman, and I'm sitting there like, okay, first of all, people get really ca ca like caught in the nuances of like, why did he just fly up, or why didn't he like just like move? And I'm like, okay, you guys have General Zod is probably stronger than Superman, yeah, like yeah. because he's trained and everything, like you know, he. I'm sorry, so he like what when you're sitting there like on adrenaline, you're trying to figure out what to do. Like that was the first thing Superman thought of was like. Instead of, I can't risk flying up because the laser, like, he may deviate, or I can't, like, try to move his head or block his eyes because if I lose it, then he'll, like, he'll jerk to the right and kill them, you know? He was like, I have to do this on impulse, and he did it, and he's like, I hate that I did that, right? Yeah, he literally like, cries I, out in pain after it. Yeah, like, he's so, he's so angry with himself that he had to soup that low, and that shows the difference between Superman and Batman, right? Like... It's just, they're very human takes, and that's what I like about it. It's because there's so many variations of these characters. We can live to have a different version in the movie that's still, like, Batman is acting like Batman. He's swinging around with his grapnel gun. He's, like, the way he's yeah. fighting. Like, he is, he is like, a human tank, you know? He's got all these awesome gadgets. Wonder Woman's fighting with her sword and shield. They're all, like, I look at them, and I'm like, that's the Justice League. But they, they act a little bit different, but because that's what Zack Snyder needs to tell his story. Like, they are still intrinsically their characters, He's just allowing for some differences to to make things not boring. Because with that, realistically, <laughs> I don't want to see a carbon copy of the comics. Like, exactly. yeah, it's cool to see like your comics come come to life. But think about Captain America: Civil War. The movie is like, other than the title, it's nothing like uh, nothing at the all. comic book, right? Like, with the that way being said, though, like I I a hundred percent like want people to know that like if you don't like this version and you want something more like the dark knight it's okay for you to not oh, like yeah absolutely these these films but just like instead of like spewing hate towards these films talk about more of the things that you love like if you love the dark knight then talk about that more and talk about why you love it instead of being like ah you know this this sucks this is garbage you it's know the same discussion we have with like spider-man where it's like we don't love what the mcu is doing with spider-man and that's okay yeah like we yeah because we have our version we that we like yeah yeah exactly. so just yeah, like, like celebrate it. that yeah and it's perfectly fine to just tell someone i i disagree but i understand like you don't have to I just don't understand why people, when it comes to these certain opinions, kind of become like cavemen and just start bashing heads and like, no, nah, I'm right and you're wrong. And it's it's, it's yeah. very archaic in terms of like thinking. Yeah, yeah very counterproductive too. Exactly. It's like, I'm just I just movie this movie in its entirety is just a win, and like I'm happy for people like us and people who really wanted this because not a lot of people did, but now there's even people that really didn't want this that are watching it and being like, oh. Well, that was way better than I thought it was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, the fact that it's that like work. critically praised on top of yeah, the audience that's loves great. it. Like, yeah. yeah, it's insane. You never should think like, to... you're... go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, should we probably uh, get back to talking about the movie parts itself? Because we've been talking about like the social dilemma of the movie for like a while. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I know Grayson well, I has like a whole again, list of stuff that's like that's well, true. I, we've, really we've cool. We've covered a lot of the stuff that I wanted to talk about. Um, but the one of the biggest thing is Ben Affleck is my favorite Batman. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I'm going to say that. Yep. I love him in this movie. He just exudes the personification of of uh bruce wayne like he looks like batman like his suit it looks sick his gadgets everything the way he fights i'm totally down for it and i love ben affleck's batman grayson has the hot toy batman. now you can't even see it because it's in the shadows as batman should be but it's kind of it's kind of uh, funny too because like the shot that that the the ending scene with man martian manhunter and bruce even though that was shot recently and ben is kind of like way past the physique of batman because you can tell he's a little skinnier in that right Cause remember yeah. those like leaked or not leaked photos but those photos of him like out in public when he was super skinny yeah you can tell that even when he's like that he's still acting like bruce because he's like exhausted yeah. all the time yeah exactly <laughs> it yeah. still works that's like, so he's true he still got it so <laughs> he went through like a I weird love. way where he was like he was ripped for batman and then he got like pretty like heavy yeah not he in, got like heavy. not in the muscular he got way super skinny 
Yeah, and then, yeah. like, I think this may be because, like, Flashpoint is shooting this year. He probably had to get in shape for it. On yeah, top of that, it just happened to work that, yeah. out. Yeah, it just happened so to work out that he was also doing the stuff for Zack Snyder, too. So he got in shape for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, he just... He, he hasn't shot anything for this film since 2016 he hasn't been batman on film like had to act as batman since 2016 and then he steps in just recently and it's like automatically he's back to bruce wayne perfect yeah yeah just the way he talks everything i mean like it's It's so funny too because when you go back to 2014 when it was casted everyone hated it everyone was so concerned about his i I wasn't hated but i i was very iffy about it I didn't I was really like, have an opinion of those older. people that like that I saw it and I was just like I can see it <laughs> back in the it. day when I that was... first happened people were like Matt Damon's gonna be Robin I remember that <laughs> <laughs> <That machine. laughs> um, so stupid one of the uh, like I think the last thing that I had to mention and this was just like like the cr- a critique of mine the first hour of this movie I wasn't super invested in I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I got a little concerned because there were some parts. So specifically, there's like three main things. A lot of the parts in the first hour are reused, like are parts from the theatrical cut that I remembered. Secondly, there are some really weird song choices that really like do drag agree. out the movie that I was just kind of like, what? Which song like, choices? Because I'm, I'm, I don't I'm I think the, the Atlantis, uh, when Aquaman's going into the water to swim off and all the women <laughs> yeah. start singing, I'm like, this is going on too long to the point oh, where I feel yeah. uncomfortable. How the movie randomly just ch- changed into Hereditary for like a split or Midsummer for like yes. a split second. Yes. That was so <laughs> weird. It was unsettling. At all. Yeah. I was yeah, like, I feel uncomfortable. Yeah. There are some other parts or like some weird. That. Songs. Oh, when when Flash is going in like this like uh, slow motion with that Iris. song, I was like, I actually kind of okay. like that because I didn't I, like I think that. What Zach was going for was like the the speed force and being a speedster in general is supposed to be viewed as kind of more beautiful than chaotic. Yeah, I think oh, that's what yeah. he was going for. I'd rather them but, had I just done saw. like I would. I, I would rather them this. say Hans Zimmer, do your thing, as opposed to like just dropping the needle for you yeah. know a song. He he does it a few times and then after like a while it go like he just stops doing that. But the yeah. weirdest part of that flash sequence is when he just like randomly like caresses Iris's face. That is weird. I was like, yeah, I was people like, have said he's kind of creepy. I saw a tweet about that earlier yeah. and I was like, yeah, a little bit. Like still had creepy. he just stood there and just like looked at her and like admired kind of, her. Like, yeah, admired her and like okay, I gotta shake out of it, you know. Like that's a totally normal thing. That's not creepy. But yeah. like him going like. I was like, what? <laughs> and then he took that hot dog and put it in his jacket. Like, what was I was, that? oh yeah, what was I was that? so scared. I, think, I don't know why I, I was scared that he was gonna like, kind of like put it near her or something. I was like, what is it exactly? I'm like, what oh, exactly God. is about to happen? He just starts slapping her in the face with a hot dog. I was At like, speed, something was weird's going, happening. She'd probably die. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was so concerned though, about that whole movie. thing. I but agree, um. Yeah. If we're talking about nitpicks, yeah. my other nitpick was like the use, the overuse of slow mo for action was killing oh me. Oh my god! I was just like the scene Ooh. in Themyscira. Oh dear God! Literally, Queen Hippolyta is there's slow motion for her just running around a corner. And it's like, ugh. yeah, it's I was like, I was getting scene. very annoyed by that, uh, and it was so the same kind out. of like sound effect too. That was just like, slow. Yeah, I think if you if you would fix some of those parts, it would probably cut out cut down like 20 minutes of the movie <laughs> yeah it went on a little, a little long for a lot of, you know a lot um, of it, like but. i don't mind slow motion in certain scenes like okay when superman is dying and like the screams that's cool like there's certain parts but there's a lot of parts that i'm like i don't need slow motion here yeah like, but that is one of Zack snyder's isms okay he loves that it's in 300 it's in Watchmen. like you know that's just the Zack he, snyder he thing. did I'll but it, it was a little bit slower than it normally is like if i look back because I think like, Zack Snyder had a heavy influence on the action in Wonder Woman. You can kind of see the oh, difference yeah. between the first oh, one yeah. and the second one. But if you look back in the action, he does slow motion in a way where it's not like dragged out. It's just he does it enough to where you can see what's going on with the action, but not enough mm-hmm. to ex- exactly like feel like you're stopping. You know what's yeah. what's going Z- on. Zack definitely has those small nuances that he's kind of a bit overdone. Like in Man of Steel, you know those like zoom in shots. Yes, I actually he love has, like, He's like eight of them, and it's like why? 
they're it, they're cool yeah. and all, but it's a bit overdone. Um, but you were talking yeah. about like nitpicks. That's his thing. I have one that I don't know if you guys will agree with me on, but anytime any Amazonian was on frame, that like operatic song that played in the background that was <laughs> yeah, it played every time. Uh, and it's like, Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was too much like in the fourth hour you're hearing it with or third hour her fighting step was like i get it we know she's amazonian play something else please <laughs> it's yeah. like it, it cuts yeah. to steppenwolf shot and it's just like dun, 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 and then it's like it goes over to amazon it's like <laughs> yeah exactly it's like it what if every like what if it like had match. these like <laughs> Cyborg starts playing dubstep. It's like, <laughs> and, then, and then Aquaman is just it's like, like the just, just like gloves. Music. Oh Glob? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just gl- 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 just like underwater sounds. Oh, and I got I got a couple of nitpicks like... actually. Um, <laughs> uh, no one else could Sorry. see this, but Grayson and Call is running with his weird hand movements that Ezra Miller has. I still don't understand how that's an Olympic runner. Like, apparently, that's what he based I it mean, off of. I, I mean, I kind of like the way it is. It's but cool. It's also, yeah, but because it's not like him going, like, in front of a green screen. Like, yeah, yeah. A <laughs> Grant Gustin. Yeah, but um, another nitpick I had, um, I completely lost it. Never mind. We'll go to Grayson. <laughs> um, and It'll oh, come gosh. back to me. Well, It'll come back to well, me. Else was, yeah, I was going to say, that, like I said earlier, the Batman Deathstroke movie, I want it. I need it. I just... Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it. I want it. I yeah. Want it. I want my phone call. Um, nah, if they turn that into like a limited series for HBO Plus, I'd be so down. HBO, HBO Plus? Plus? Or pl- <laughs> God, HBO Max. Disney Disney has ruined me. We're the same person, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything is like Plus now. It's like Paramount, Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus? Yeah. Disney Plus? Yes, yeah. ESPN Plus. It's like, it's tough to keep up with. Apple has Apple TV. Um, I'm trying to think. If there's anything else I have on my list, not really. Um, Song Henry choices. Cavill is the be- yeah. yeah. Here, here is my full list, and I've already <laughs> said Henry Cavill is the best. Steppenwolf is awesome. I love Cyborg. Not a fan of the first hour because of the CGI and weird music. Uh, need that Batman Deathstroke movie or limited series. Martian Manhunter, awesome. Ben Affleck is the goat. Ezra Miller, a lot better here. Nightmare, I need more. People complaining about Batman killing. We talked about that. Deathstroke looks awesome and uh the mara accent w- really took me out of it that's all i that was when he, we touched touched on all of those so i've said um, what yeah I i've to say i've said what i need I to say a, too i have a couple other things i want to talk about but i'm like it's a little too much and they would extend it to like a huge degree i have so i told you like the last couple days grace and i have a lot to talk about and i don't know your opinion no, go that. for it okay so um what are your guys's opinion on uh, Jesse Eisenberg's real dialogue in this version <laughs> compared to the we should make a league of our own thing because I I so still much better. I still stand by him as Lex Luthor like I it he looks actually cohesively smart like sane now mm-hmm. like, I feel he like he was better structured in this. now yeah in the small like screen time he actually had I was like okay I could buy that guy as Lex Luthor because before it just felt like he was a teenage kid he felt like Riddler. Which, yeah, he, I mean, he felt like Riddler, and it just didn't feel like he really... I could take him seriously as a villain. Yeah. Like, if I, if I like, imagine your death stroke, and somebody like the old Lex Luthor calls you into, like, you know, meet or something like that, I'm like, who is this dude? I'm like, I can't take this guy seriously. Whereas yeah. this one, he, like, pulls up, and, like, Lex Luthor's just sitting on a yacht, and he's got, like, some valuable information for him and stuff like that. Like that's more of the Lex Luthor I can kind of like see, you know. And I, I think where he's like, I'm good... gonna get this guy to do the job for me. Mm-hmm. Rather, I think than... you got a good point with that though, because in BVS he was wearing like suit jackets and t-shirts, but then in this movie he's got a full-fledged suit, like a grown-up. Yeah. Like, not a grown-up, but like a businessman. Like he's a businessman. He's man. a big boy now. He's a big boy. He's running things now. Yeah. You know. He, he... It's funny when I watch that scene. I don't. I have this inner dialogue sometimes when I'm watching movies to try and make up for like plot holes how does he have money he got arrested like wouldn't they take it i'm confused yeah when you're a criminal like you got money in funny places yeah he's and then i realized he's probably got ways and then what was the other thing um martian manhunter what were your guys' takes on his design i actually loved it i just like it really 
Man. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because they it, it's brand new VFX, and maybe if they did it like more fine tuned. But all I saw was Henry Lennox with like lines on his face. Oh yeah. And I mean, it, but it's kind of supposed to look like that. I, I guess. guess, but I don't know. Maybe I'm 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 too spoiled with like Mark Ruffalo um, motion capture a little bit. But yeah, true. Also, that's fair. Also, I really wanted a very alien kind of head. You know, he's he's just got a round head. Oh yeah, that's I didn't that's like a good that. point I was, actually. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think I didn't, about that because he's supposed to be from Mars, and it's like he just looks like a human with like scars now, and it's like I didn't he, look he, as he's... if it was. It didn't look like it was mocap. It felt like it was just full CGI. Like uh, Zach said, oh, it was yeah. mocap. Maybe oh, just really? For the face. Yeah, he said but... it was mocap. It might be just for the face, though. Yeah, dude. But, Rain, uh, you have like, to think though. I... They only they had seventy million dollars left to finish the post production. Yeah. There was a lot of post production yeah. left to be done. So I mean, I they was... might have been like, Here, here's some extra change for that. But the costume itself, I loved. You know, it was very spot on. It's just. I, I, I felt I kind of got taken out of the movie a little bit every time I saw the two times we saw him, and yeah. I will admit the scene with Martha when he first showed up I didn't expect it. I I, I kind of I went crazy. I was like, <sighs> what? <laughs> I, I loved it. It just kind of just snuck in there out of nowhere, and it's like, all uh, but right, I cool. love his reason for being there because oh, he obviously had a, an immense amount of respect for Lois Lane and wanted to see her get back out in the action. Now I was like at first I was disappointed because I thought that that conversation with you know, between Martha and, you know, daughter-in-law and, you know, mother-in-law. I thought that that was going to be, like, really heartfelt. Which, you know, even though it is a Martian Manhunter, it's a hundred times better than the conversation we had between um, oh them in the, the first The thirstiest reporter one. that there was. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, like, it's so, meaning, it, it's so meaningless. And, like, in that one, it's just, like, ugh, it's it's just such, yeah. such a throwaway scene with those those two. Um, we're in this. Think... Lo- Lois Lane's a completely different character in this because oh, she's yeah. co- she's walked away from her work, um, whereas she's still back at work, even though she's just writing fluff pieces, you know. Yeah. Um, so that I, like I, I that really like that her. whole thing. Yeah, that that made more sense. Like, why would you? I understand that like certain people they kind of hide themselves in their work, but I don't take Lois as the kind of person, especially with how much she loved him, um, to just go. Yeah, back to she's work completely like that. alone. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's. And she worked I, with him. The thing that I love so, about it too is when you watch because I watched Man of Steel, BVS, Justice League, and then the Snyder Cut kind of within four days of each other. So I saw all of them all together back to back. Um, she falls in love with him so fast, and I completely understand yeah. why. And when you you see how much she loves him in BVS, and then you see what she is in the Justice League, it's like she didn't really love him. Yeah. Nice. But then in Snyder Cut, you can really see the pain she's going through. Did you see the difference between the two where, like, in um in Joss Whedon's, she's like, you smell nice. And he's like, did I not yeah. before? And then this one, she's like, you're talking. And he's like, did I not before? Yeah, I thought that was... Why, why would you change that? <laughs> What's the point? What is the point to yeah, being like, no you point. smell all, nice? All the scenes <laughs> from that movie were literally created to pad the time. And cohesively, they had no... They had no background to help the story anyway. Yeah. And that that's what makes it kind of sad, and I kind of want to laugh at WB a little bit for choosing that. Um, yeah. Because it's like, why, why would you go that route, you know? Um, and then I had one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, Lois, because that's a good segue. Um, so Zack Snyder said that in his third Justice League oh. movie... We talked uh, about this last night. Su- mm. Superman and Lois' son would replace Batman and become yeah. Batman. I think that's really interesting. I think that's an interesting take. I actually love that idea. Because Superman I and love Lois it is out right 10 now, years away from you, now. And yeah, honestly. And that show is like, okay, they're, they're one of them's got powers, the other doesn't. But then it's like this. like I, I don't think I've, we've ever seen that take before where Superman's son became Batman. I don't yeah. think that's ever yeah. been done before, and it's really clever. There's been a take where Superman, like, where Clark Kent, well, he wasn't Clark Kent, he was, like, he like, was named Bruce Wayne, but yeah. he crash lands in, in Gotham. And, yeah, like, there was that. Yeah. But and that's not that's not his son being Batman. Yeah, like, that's, that's him being just, Batman. And, and, like, he's uh, he just has no powers or anything, but they, like, name him because Batman, like, Bruce Kent, because Batman sacrifices himself to save Lois because he knows Lois is the key and if, if she dies all hope is lost yeah. because 
Superman. I mean, as we've seen from the Injustice games, if Lois Lane dies, Superman goes cuckoo. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but the, I, I love that idea. Mm, that, Nothing. I, 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 I can't. Like I said, I like it ten years from now. After I can't like, say it enough. I want the sequels. Couple of Batman's. I yeah. want the sequels so badly. At the very um, least, give us the nightmare sequence. In in a in an actual film or series, and like Kabu said, make it like this else world thing. If you want, in another timeline somewhere, you know, tell this story. I would be yeah. so down yeah. for that. Honestly, like if they don't make a third one, I, it could work because it would just be the alternate universe timeline, and this could. Still Everything work as is an really. For it. This whole the whole like DC EU is riding on Flashpoint. Whatever they decide to do with Flashpoint yep. is going to be their reset button, which is a little bit concerning because they've already written the script and they're casting people, and they're going off of you know the idea that Zack Snyder's Justice League isn't necessarily canon to their universe. It's a little bit frustrating. Yeah, um, it really is. But I mean, like, there's a lot riding on the Flashpoint movie because this is it. Like, you can't reset the universe another time. Yeah. Um. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, but you know, regardless, still give us that like Else Worlds. You know, in another timeline, this is what's going on. You know, story with Zack Snyder's mm-hmm. Nightmare timeline. Yeah. But I think we all love the movie? movie. Like out of ten. Out of ten. Uh, I'm going. I'm like between eight point five and nine. I really loved it. Like, yeah, it's it, even if even though it's four hours long, I've seen it twice. I've I've dedicated eight hours of my life into this movie in the past week. It, I just love it. Mm-hmm. I'd give it an eight point five as well. I think I'd give it a nine. Yeah, I'm somewhere in between that those two. Yeah, yeah, I I think mainly just because I'm like comparing it to like other nines that I have for comic book movies, and I'm like I definitely enjoy them more than this. But this is really up there for me. Yeah, um, and I'm just happy we got to see it. But but yeah, I have nothing else left to say on this. Um, nope, I'm and, good. I've, I've uh, said my yeah. piece. Fantastic. Well, that's gonna do what? it for this episode of the Comic Blast podcast. Um, <laughs> let's get into the housekeeping stuff and and all that jazz. First and foremost, I want to mention again that Cole couldn't be here, but he sent his regards, and him and I, I'm go- I feel like I owe it to him as uh, as one of his best friends and co-hosts that we will get an episode of maybe the After Blast of him and I just talking, um, possibly you know playing some games, just having some drinks, talking about Justice League, um, something real casual. Um, but he wishes he could be here. Go follow him at the Cosmic Lotus on Twitter and at and the Forces with me on Instagram. Speaking of that, you can follow us at Cosmic Blast underscore on Twitter <laughs> and Instagram. I said comic. You said cosmic. Did you? I, you said cosmic. <laughs> yeah, you said cosmic. Okay. Cosmic Blast. Well, I'm sorry. I it has been a very long. Day you, well, you said very, Cosmic very Lotus, and then you go to co- okay. Comic Blast. I can understand. So. Yeah, that's true. Listen, give me some slack here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at Comic Blast underscore on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow me at Straits the on both of those as well. You can follow Keenan at Keenan Creates. Uh, Raymond, what is your handle again? So for my Twitter, my Twitter handle is at RAV8598. And then on Instagram, it's at Raymond Valor. Cool. Yeah, you need to get those in sync. I'm yeah, kidding. I think I'm going to. <laughs> I'm doing that yeah. right now as we speak, actually. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't want this anymore. This okay, it well, I'm gonna get through all this stuff, and you can re-say it after I'm done. Uh, we have a Patreon, uh, Patreon.com/slash/ComicBlast, um, and we have a whole list of people that support us over there. Um, speaking of which, I don't think we ever got uh, Rick in the Discord nope. if he wants to be in the Discord. Um, but I'm gonna look at my look at the, our list anyway, even though usually I remember it like the back of my hand. But I'm very tired and don't want to mess it up. Um, so we have Caleb, Jacob, Jake, Sam, Diego, Joseph, and of course um, Rick. 
thank you guys so much for supporting us and you too can support us at patreon.com slash comic blast it really helps keep us motivated and um and yeah just helps keep us in check and we would really really appreciate it um again caboose was in the episode earlier you can go check him out at caboose ek on pretty much everything he's on twitch he's on youtube he's a close friend of mine and he's always been supportive of this podcast and what i've been doing with it or what we've been doing with it i should say um so go give him uh go check him out go give him some love um as i'm sure a lot of his fans will probably come over here and listen to us as well so um if any of you guys come from caboose we really appreciate it and thank you guys so much um we also have a website comic blast network or no just comicblast.net. sorry um comicblast.net. we need some writers over there uh if you want to shoot uh is it is it comic blast network at gmail.com or just comic yep. blast at gmail okay comic blast network at gmail.com send an email over there and uh, give a pitch show us some of your work and maybe you could get on the website to be a kind of a freelance writer for us um because god knows we need them i'm in school uh a lot of us are in school actually and it really helps us out a lot and if you're a fan of the podcast or what we do we would really appreciate it um I'm drawing blanks. I think I've done it all. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys all so much for listening to this episode. Um, Let us know what you guys thought with uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, You can tweet any one of us on our takes, if they're hot, if they're not. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I'm curious. I want to know. You can, And then uh, let's just get some discussion going. um, And, yeah, hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. But if you didn't, that's okay, too. Yeah. Keenan, Raymond, anything else you guys have left to say? Nope. Nope. Thank you guys for listening. It was a great episode. Uh, thank, thanks to our guests, Raymond and Oh, yeah. Caboose. Thanks for I appreciate you guys taking guys. your time to hang yeah, out with we, us. It's we cool. really appreciate both you guys. And, of course, Raymond, you're still here with us. Thank you. Um, you've been <laughs> on the... You've been on the legacy of, of this specific topic. That's and true. I hope to get you on more episodes. Because I would love to be on more, honestly. Listen. Go, go follow Raymond. Go do it. <laughs> Go do it right now. So the question is, what is Grayson's outro going to be? It can't be Shazam. I know. Shazam's not even remotely a part of this. Um, no. I'm going to start singing Hallelujah. Do the, do the Joker. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Henry Cavill, come back, please. Oh, Lois, how she suffered so (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) That's got to be the intro or the outro of the episode.